Hi, my name is Alex Dolphin and welcome back to another episode of Ex Ante. Today we're going to discuss the case of Southern Burlington County NAACP versus Township of Mount Laurel. This case is in the Supreme Court of New Jersey in the year of 1975. Let's go ahead and jump into the facts of the case. So, the NAACP is the plaintiff and the township is the defendant. Um, the NAACP is alleging that the defendant's zoning ordinances are exclusionary to low-income people. So now let me just give you a little bit of uh, a history of the township and where this ordinance came from. So the township uh, was a suburb, um, very small originally. It was kind of like an agricultural area. And then, you know, after World War II, after more and more people began moving to the suburbs with the advent of the highway, more and more people moved out um, into this agricultural area and basically it did become a large uh, suburb over time. So the township of Mount Laurel enacts a zoning ordinance because all these people are moving out, right? Um, the council says that, you know, there's a few things that the NAACP alleges um, are exclusionary about this ordinance. So the first is that um, the council zoned 30% of the township for industrial use, uh, which that means no one could ever, you know, put a townhouse in there, no one could put an apartment in there, no one even could put a regular house in there because it was just zoned for industrial use and it really wasn't being used. Um, so it seemed to the NAACP like this was just kind of a blanket to make sure that no one came in and put low income housing there. Um, the second thing would be that there were these residential zones um, that were quite large and these residential zones basically required it to be a single family house and they dictated the lot size so that they were like, you know, only only middle income or uh, high income people could actually have access to these larger lots with these larger single family homes. Um, they did allow some PUDs to be developed. So they allowed some condos and things like that to be develop developed eventually. Um, but these PUDs basically had a limit on uh, bedroom size. And they also had a covenant that ran with the land that said, if you have more than 0 0.3 children per, uh, per condo, then you have to actually pay the costs for their tuition for school. So remember that is important. Um, and then finally, uh, they even developed areas with more condos, but they were just for seniors. So there were very limited uh, low income housing options and low, you know, not many condos or townhouses, apartment buildings, things we think that, uh, you know, people with low income like to live in. I um, mean, the zoning ordinance basically made this a fact. It, it, if it weren't for the zoning ordinance, there likely would be more apartments and townhomes. But because of the zoning ordinance, it basically restricted it to single family homes or if there are condos um, to seniors. Um, so uh, why did the township of Mount Laurel do this? Um, and the township argues the reason that they did this was they wanted to uh, basically use the zoning, zoning ordinance to limit the tax base, right? So property taxes um, in most places uh, fund schools. So if there's less kids in the area, the property taxes are gonna be lower. That's the argument from the township. So they were trying to exclude kids and families and lower income families because they felt that if they could keep the property taxes, if they could keep the school budgets lower than the property taxes would stay lower. So that's the argument of the defendant. The plaintiff obviously is arguing that these are exclusionary ordinances and you know they're not constitutional. They're in violation with due process uh, in the constitution because we're not allowing people equal access um, to property. So the court rules that the zoning um, in this instance is not a valid use of the state's police power. They say that because zoning uses the state's police power, it, you know, it needs to promote the general welfare of the community. And here they say what the township of Mount Laurel is doing is very selfish, right? Um, the general welfare, the state says, extends beyond the boundaries of the township of Mount Laurel. What the township of Mount Laurel is doing for itself um, is obviously beneficiary to the citizens of, of uh, the township, right? Because they have a lower tax base. They have you know, just a wealthier society. There's no lower income people on the streets. Um, for them, it's it's great. But what it does is it sends all of those lower income people to other places, right? Um, and so what the court says is when you are um, using the state's police power to enact zoning ordinances, you need to consider the general welfare of the community uh, as a whole. You can't just consider the general welfare of the people inside your own city. Um, 
they argued that the residential zones were you know far too large and yeah they were exclusionary because you couldn't put townships or condo or excuse me not townships townhouses or condos on them they argued the PUDs and the covenants were um, you know not right the fact that you can limit children um, that definitely has an exclusionary effect on lower income uh, folks and they also mentioned that the industrial zone was far too large you know it wasn't even really being used I mean it's not apparent that it would ever get used the court says so um, the court gives the Township of Mount Laurel 90 days to come up with amendments for zoning ordinances, and then it gives the NAACP a chance to challenge those amendments. So it doesn't really dictate. It doesn't say like, hey, you have to you know, build these low-income housing. No, it just says you need to change your zoning ordinances so that they are in accord with the general enacting uh, zoning ordinance uh, in the state of New Jersey. So that's the case. Um, Hallmark for uh, you know saying exclusionary zoning practices are not legal. You can't use the state's police power to exclude low-income people from a certain community. Um, so I think I'll just play the devil's advocate first. Uh, the argument for the defendant would be, well, you know, there's a city council for a reason, um, and people elect these city councils. Um, and if you really want to see the zoning ordinances changed then just elect a different city council. And if you elect a different city council, then they can strike down these zoning ordinances, allow for more townhouses, allow for more condos, allow for more multifamily housing, um, and make it more affordable for people to live there. But as the city council exists, it reflects the will of the people living in the township of Mount Laurel. And the will of the people living in the township of Mount Laurel is to not have this low income housing in their community. So that's devil's advocate um, to, make an argument for the plaintiff, um, which is likely one that they made, uh, you know, the American dream is dependent upon low income people having access to high class opportunities. It's dependent upon low income people having access to people that are in higher classes than themselves um, to be able to climb that ladder, climb the rung and make it to the top of society. Um, do we really want an America that's even more, because it definitely is right now, but even more segmented into poor cities and wealthy cities? Um, and, you know, while that might be advantageous to the wealthy people, it really doesn't give the poor people a fair chance to, you know, climb the ladder and, and do the best that they can to make the most of their life and accomplish the most that they'd like to. Um, and so I think the court definitely had that in mind when they were striking down these exclusionary zoning uh, ordinances. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I hope you have a nice rest of your day. Bye bye.